Welcome to the 12th edition of Dead by Daylight Mobile Adventures. This features the return of Cheryl, or Alyssa, which is the uh, cosmetic I'm using. And we have three matches in this video instead of the usual two because most of them weren't that long. It also features the return of Orange Juice, who is someone I've had in at least three of these before and arguably my closest associate <laughs> Um, in playing this game with and Spaghetti Regret, who's someone that they play with often as well. Maybe they know him in real life, I don't know. So, you see us powering through this generator. I hear a chainsaw in the background. That tells me it's one of two killers. It's either Hillbilly or Leatherface. And I'm hoping it's Hillbilly because Hillbilly's chainsaw has not been used to the same ridiculous extent that Leatherface has. At least for matches I've seen where I've played against him. So we finish this generator and we start to move around you know, closer to, I guess, the action on the map. I always like to split away from the other members of the team because we seem to do our best work when we're not all together. You see how quickly that person gets hit twice, right? Now that leads me to believe it's probably Hillbilly because a lot of people who play as Leatherface and they get you in the chase and they're close enough, they'll power up their chainsaw so that they can insta-down you. They don't have to hit you twice. And I have seen some hillbillies and, I mean, if we want to even get another killers, uh, there are a lot of people who play as nurse that are able of doing this where they can hit you twice very quickly, like within moments. Um, and a lot of it has to do with closing the gap because I mentioned before that one of the things that's very appealing to me about Hillbilly is that he's very fast. So when I try to do this generator, I see that that hook is downstairs in the basement, which is the worst place to get put um, of any hook. And I decide to try to finish this generator and then maybe make an attempt to save them later on. Um, I have enough time to do that too because I'm looking at the amount that's there. So I get a little bit of a, I want to say confidence boost when the other generator goes off. And this is what gets scary. So orange juice gets knocked down. You know, orange juice is my associate person I care about the most uh, out of my three teammates. So that makes me want to spring to action because I mentioned before that one of my fatal flaws when I'm with um, people who invite me to play with them is that because of how rare it is to even get an invite from anybody when you play these games, um, I feel as if I have to save them. You know, it's my obligation as, you know, they don't have to play with me if they don't want to. So I go down here, I try to be all sneaky. And here is it, here it is, Basement Brother. This is a stupid thing I really hate where someone who's playing as Leatherface will sit in front of the hook and then when another person tries to rescue the person that's on the hook, they'll knock them down. Now, the reason that person was able to get back up is because they have decisive strike, which is a move I don't really like. But it's a move where if a person is picked up and they're on the second hook stage or even put picked up before, they can knife the killer and then be able to um, keep running. I don't have that on anybody because I, I just, I don't like that move. Um, it's a very overused part by a lot of survivors and I've complained about it before. So now I'm on the hook right next to Orange Juice. I should also mention that there is a way to avoid this chainsaw downing both people. And the way to do it, and this, a lot of this has to do with uh, me not knowing specifically that it was Leatherface or that he was even down there. But one of the things that you do, you see him just face camping me, is to grab the person from the side that he's opposite of. So when he tries to use his chainsaw, it'll protect you. And the other person has like a temporary immunity to his powers. And also if you have borrowed time, because borrowed time allows the person to have an extra hit that they can take when they're in the injured state. So orange juice just passed away. I'm gonna follow up. You know, stuff like matches like this always depress me just as a player because what's fun about it, you know? Just sitting on a hook minute after minute while your teammates try to get you off. It's just really boring. I mean, sometimes I get it, you know, if it's late in the game trying to get a secure kill. 
um, if you're getting gen rushed. But he he got this person on the hook when we only had one generator and just decided to uh, sit there the whole time. I don't know, it's just, it's just another tactic I'm never the biggest fan of. And I, I, I do try to make it sense. Like I was saying that I understood, for example, um, where people will tunnel, you know, and they'll go after someone. But this this seems to be the camping and tunneling era where uh, these matches, by the way, were recorded back to back. You have a recurring feature of just someone gets you on the hook. They intend to keep you on there forever. That's why they sit in front of it. Or if someone gets you off the hook, they make sure to keep following that one person. So this is Spaghetti Regret. Um, you're seeing his point of view. He's trying to play sneak. What's really disappointing is that in the time I was on the hook, they could have finished another generator. Um, and because that this person seems to be a tunneler, as far as you know, trying to get the same person on the hook earlier, he could have waited in a corner, referring to Spaghetti Regret for the other person. And it was kind of a change, so I wasn't moved to get down and throw on the hook and you know, at that point be removed from the match and then while that was happening look for the hatch and then leave through that. That's actually a tactic that was used by um, another one of my teammates when we played against Ghost Base and I believe that was the sixth edition of this. Yeah. So he's trying to get himself off the hook. Yeah, he's trying to four percent. That's a thing we do where we pretty much just accept there's no way for us to win. Um, it's funny, this person actually was trying to rescue Spaghetti Regret, and you see that lag? That, that was what I saw on my screen. That's not your video messing up. That was what the game looked like to me. <laughs> this game is so buggy and glitchy. Um, so that other person getting chased, they go down in like five seconds. Big show. And Spaghetti Regret accepts that no one is going to win this match other than the face camping with other face it's funny too because in the fifth edition of this series um back when i used to still play with fauna the second match had a face uh, a face camping leather face it wasn't in the basement but it was still him sitting there with his chainsaw out to go so yeah that was a really disappointing match so I deviate a little bit from the normal as far as my usual gameplay by going to do this generator that spawns right next to me, or where I spawn next to rather. Don't really know who's the killer here. No terror radius. So I immediately think it's either Michael or Ghostface, both of whom I haven't really been seeing that much in recent plays of the game. But I'm just powering through this generator, you know? Which is something I always do when I'm not being chased by the killer. And you know, I, I really wish I could get a compilation video going of all the different times I've been on the hook and just watched my whole team just running around. Like, it was really disappointing to know that a lot of these matches last longer than, say, seven minutes, eight minutes, ten minutes, because everyone is acting as if they're all being chased by the killer. They just don't try to actually do anything that's really that helpful which is one of the reasons i like playing with oranges because they're very helpful with um, also doing generators so now oranges is playing as bill just to clarify <laughs> they're not like me they don't play as the same person for three four five matches so now we realize that michael is here um the last time before these matches that I played against the Michael might have been maybe a week or two ago. It's been a while. Not, not a while, it's like a really long time, but just there's there's been a lot of repeats and he's walking over there in his little, his little bed sheet. <laughs> I don't know why that cosmetic is so popular. There was a Michael I went up against uh, who had Scratch Mirror, which is a perk that lets the killer see you no matter where you are on the map, but they can't go as fast. And it was so irritating. I was actually using this same uh, character, so Cheryl, with the Alyssa skin. Because, like, I can't heal. He just comes up, stabs me, you know, just, it's it's not really that fun. So he just grabbed uh, Spaghetti Regret off of the generator that he was on. And if you remember, or if you'll remember, um, that was something that was done to me by a Michael in the previous installment. 
less than two minutes into the match as well. And I was playing with Forget Regret and Orange Juice in that match too. It's funny how so, so much stuff is just similar to each other, just repeats itself. So Spaghetti Regret gets put on the hook. Um, and I, you know, I notice a little bit of what's going on in the background. But I also try to make sure I finish this generator because I don't know what this Michael is planning on doing if he's just going to sit there or um, not. One of the things about Michael that makes him appealing to play as is that a lot of survivors, when they try to get somebody off the hook, they'll hide or think they're hiding in spots where you can see them and get stalk off of. So when they come up to the hook, you just hit them and insta-down them as well and get more hostages that way. But yeah, since he's not coming over here, I'm really convinced that this is now a safe, guaranteed generator I'll be able to finish. It's, it's really bizarre just how these uh, people play this game. <laughs> so I finished the generator. And I try, because I don't want to just leave someone on my friend list on the hook for the whole match. I hate that. And then another generator goes off by the random that's playing with me and Speak Up Regret and Orange Juice. So, Orange Juice gets Spaghetti Regret off the hook. Spaghetti Regret gets knocked down, right? Which tells me that this Michael is tunneling, um, which is where you, the person that gets taken off the hook is the same person you decide to go after because you're trying to get them out of the match as quickly as possible. And Spaghetti Regret ends up, unfortunately, you know, passing on. And again, it's a tactic that I get, but I, when I'm on the receiving end of it, especially when I'm playing with a group, it's not exactly something I look forward to. But this match is still going much better than the other one because we have three people, one gen, which, by the way, is giving me, you know, flashbacks to the uh, to DVD Mobile Adventures Five with the with that Legion where it was three people and one gen, and somehow he still won. So I tried to power through this generator. The assumption I had when I was doing this generator was that after, and a lot of killers do this, they'll put somebody on the hook, and then they'll run off somewhere. And so that other random was helpful. They um, did the generator before I did. So the plan I have now is to go and open the exit gate to 99%, or, you know, until pretty much you just tap it and it'll open, and then go back and get orange juice. Because as I said, I always try to make sure that my teammates survive. I even have some matches I recorded where I was the uh, I, I was the sacrifice. Like I would go and get somebody off the hook, whether it be in base camp, and make sure that they um, survived, or at least you know if they didn't survive, it wasn't because I wasn't trying to protect them. So this is what I'm talking about: you get the door all the way, right? But not not entirely. So it's, if I tap it, then I can leave. I go to look in here to see, you know, if I can go down there and get her, get her. I'm going to use that for orange juice. And then I see that Michael is face camping. So this is now the second match in a row where the killer got somebody, right, on the hook. And then was able to just sit there for the rest of the game staring at that person on the hook while we did generators or otherwise tried to win the match in spite of that. And I've had face campers before this, and tunnelers, um, and I've even shown a few of them as well. It's just not usually back-to-back. -back. Like, there's a little bit of variety. I even had one person who made a joke that all the killers uh, in this game have a group chat where they decided that December 26th, so the day after Christmas, which when, is when this was recorded, would be the day of face camping and tunneling. <laughs> Man, this is insane. I had to put in the third match because I felt sh kind of shortchanged. Like those matches aren't the worst. I don't. I wouldn't call them boring, but they're just kind of depressing in the sense that in one of them the whole team loses because the killer has a insta down power that you can't avoid unless you use like a very specific thing to get somebody off the hook. And then in the other one. 
which, you know, I survived, but, you know, the two people that are in my group don't because the killer sits in front of the hook the entire time. And when they get off the hook, they chase after the person who's already been sitting on the hook for so long. And if they get stuck on there again, they're going to be eliminated from the match. So, you know, these, these aren't bad as far as, oh man, I regret what I did. Um, but they're not really that interesting or entertaining to me either. They're kind of like a middle road thing. I think this one's slightly better than the other two. So we power through this generator. I said before, I'm not a fan of three people being on one generator. I start looking around to see who, who's the killer of this round. They finish the generator, or we finish it rather. I start to move around a little bit. I go this way. I venture into the forest, traveling around. One of my teammates has been injured. You gotta remember, I'm not playing this with sound, so if you hear something and I don't make a comment on it, it's because I'm just looking at through a tiny little screen. Yeah, there, there's a lot of people who say that doing generators is boring, and I've always disagreed with that, because part of the appeal of them is you're in this, you're forced to sit in this one spot by yourself, and have to make sure that you don't get hit, that you're able to finish it before the killer comes, there, there's a lot of fun to it. So that's where Michael gets into tier 3, insta-downs someone. In this case, forget regret. And you see him in the foreground, in that little corner. It's not, it's not the best picture quality, but you can see him in the background a little bit, or you could see him. He went somewhere. And this is where I have what's pretty much my only real chase out of any of these three matches. Um, he comes over here. I pre drop the pallet. And while he's breaking it, I know that gives me at least like an extra two, three seconds to get away. He starts to follow me. Now, I'm assuming I'm probably going to get insta-downed as well, but I'm going to also be successful in luring him away from the hook. Because one of the mistakes that survivors run into is that they like to um, run around somewhere where another person's trying to make a rescue so the killer can just insta-down three people, potentially, if they play their cards right. Uh, I, get, I don't wanna, I know if you would call this looping, but I'm one of the things I like about this little section right here, and he... Yeah, he's, he starts to become attracted to a pattern, and he loses his Tier 3. He runs out of it. It's a limited time ability. So I was very shocked that uh, he didn't give me... And I get behind this pallet because he can't get stalk off me if he can't see me. So he goes somewhere else to get stalk. But yeah, I was surprised I survived uh, that encounter with no hit. Because I didn't think I was doing anything exceptionally amazing. Um, maybe that's just because I'm so used to having matches where I get insta-down by a killer or, you know, put on a hook before one gen has been done or the first person to get put on a hook. So maybe I'm not as confident of my uh, abilities as I could be, but, you know, I was very surprised that I didn't, you know, end up getting put there. So I stand this corner to see where he's going. And when it starts to look as if he's not going to just sit in front of this generator all day long, which is something a lot of killers like to do when they're under stress of one gen being left. I go over to try and help with uh, repairing it, and I find out it's pretty much almost done anyway. And then I go to the door. I'm also looking around. You know, when you don't have a terror radius on these killers, it can really make you nervous. Or at least more um, open to being mindful of where they are, you know. So, we go over to this gate. It's being opened. I'm still looking around for Michael. He's over there and I hear his music. <laughs> Which means he got tier 3 off of somebody else. 
Don't know who it is because I don't see them. Yeah, it's always a, a very curious thing. See, the issue with um, these insta-down killers like Michael or Leatherface is that, and, and Michael admittedly is not as bad because he has to take some time to even get stock. Like, very skilled survivors are able to just rob him of that completely. Um, sometimes depending on what map they're on, but the, the worst part is I couldn't even body block for Orange Juice was seemingly the one that was being chased by Michael for as long as they were. Because if I try to go over there and body block and he gets tier 3 and he insta-downs me and then, you know, there's a new issue of how do we rescue you off the hook. So, I was waiting for Orange Juice and Spaghetti Regret to come over here and we could leave together, but they start, I guess, trying to investigate, look around. I'm not too interested because I got off of one match where I didn't win because I was trying to rescue one of them. And then another match where I did win, but I couldn't rescue either of them. So, you know, it's just me trying to, I guess, make sure that they're safe, if you will. I want to sound paternal or anything, but, you know, you play with the same people for a while and you don't have any, that many people on your friend list to actually play with you. You start to get protective. So I decided to leave anyway because they're, they're, they're so far in the exit gate. I reason that they're probably just going to... Um, either teabag or look for something else I, you know i don't put too much thought into it but no, they, they leave um pretty much right after me so this part actually scared me she's doing the um the door and i'm thinking okay well this probably means that you know he gave up he went to go sit somewhere you know, he's probably not interested in doing anything else. And then all of a sudden, that's really scared me. No, no terror radius or anything. Just, just come up and stab. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.